How's it going, everyone? It's Jeremy J with another video. This video is an important video. And it's based on things I've seen in my own experience in almost nine years of being on my own and largely single and dating and experiencing what that is like. It is the crisis that men have with women in today's world. <clears throat> a lot of you who are watching this video are women on my channel, interestingly enough. So it'll be interesting to hear your perspective <clears throat> on this video. But I can share experience as a man, a man that I think is different than a lot of men in this world and what my experience has been like and why I think there is a crisis for men in regards to women in today's world. So back when I was in third grade, I think, uh, I remember being super shy around girls. <laughs> I was, I had a difficult, difficult time even saying hello to a girl. And this was like some of my earliest memories of sitting at a lunch table in my third grade class. Uh, I remember sitting next to this girl, Gretchen, and I just kind of froze up. And this is third grade as a young boy. And so right away, I recognized that this nervousness I had is not unique to me. I've talked to many men. I've seen many videos of men, and there are many coaches online and on YouTube and whatnot that coach men to be better in social situations around women. This is not a common problem for me. This is a common problem among men. And I think women get anxious and, and have challenges socializing or going up to a man and saying hello as well. But this video is the crisis that men have with women. And as I, as I got older, this didn't go away. I remember in fourth grade, there is this girl, Nicola, that I liked. And I remember writing a note that I never gave her <laughs> because I was too scared of what she might do if she read it. Like I was, I was too afraid of getting rejected and time went on and there was various girls I liked over elementary school, middle school, high school. And it wasn't until I was 16 in 11th grade, 16 or 17, I think six, yeah, somewhere around there that I got my first girlfriend in high school. Her name was Tequila. And it kind of just happened. It, it's not like I was um, aggressively trying to make this happen. She just happened to get assigned a seat to me in one of my classes in 11th grade. And so we started talking because it was easy because she was sitting next to me. So it's not like I had to go across the room and approach her. Uh, but she was African-American and I was white and both of our parents at the time didn't like that. I didn't care. I don't care what race someone is, but our parents at the time didn't like that. And so it kind of died off, <laughs> fizzled or whatever you want to call it. And then the next year I got another girlfriend. Her name was Tamira. Uh, I played basketball in high school, played in the ghetto, played on the varsity team for Kalamazoo Central in Michigan. And I grew up around African-Americans playing basketball and being largely the only white boy on the team. Uh, or there was one or two other white guys on the team. And I enjoyed that very much. And so in high school, I had this affinity towards um, African-American women. Just, they were interesting to me. And so I got another girlfriend. Her name was Tamira. And uh, she, she rode the bus home the same bus as me and she lived kind of close and so that made it easy to talk to her and, and it was very it was very obvious to see that she was interested in me <laughs> because uh, when we rode the bus she'd give me these looks like there's just a look a woman gives you when you know she's really interested in you like if a woman's not looking at you or kind of giving you the cold shoulder cold shoulder which means she's turning away from you uh, that probably means she doesn't want to talk to you. Now, it could be that she's just scared or playing a game, but nine out of 10 times, I think it's because she doesn't want to talk to you. This is just something I've learned. 
I'll get to the things I've learned uh, later on in this video. But the same thing happened there. My parents didn't like that she was black and <clears throat> kind of fizzled out. And, and uh, I was very religious. I was Mormon at the time. And I think this girl wanted to have sex with me and I was too scared because of religion. And I think she's like, well, I'm going to move on because this guy's not giving me what I need. I think that's what happened when I play, play the memories back because she was at my house and obviously showed signs that she wanted that. And I'll get to that later on in this video. I promise I'm going to get to the crisis of men with women, but I'm kind of sharing my journey. Uh, the journey of my life before I started to gain an understanding of this crisis um, anyways, she and I broke up. I was sad for a couple months and then I went off to college or I went out to live in uh, Utah for a year and went on a church mission to Ireland for two years. Um, didn't do much dating during that those three years. And I mean, I mean, that year before I went on a mission, I lived in Utah from age 18 to 19. I went out on a couple dates, but nothing, nothing really major. And then I came home from this mission, uh, went out on a couple more dates. Something in me, there was this innate thing in me. Maybe it's just the biological drive imperative that's programmed into men. And I don't know what to call it. But something in me knew that trying to talk to women and go on a date with them would do something that would help me grow. It helped me learn and grow as a person. I, at least I felt the initial spark of it at a young age and, and that challenge because it's not easy. It's not, not easy at all. Like I can go to my yoga classes today and, and see a variety of attractive fit women. And my, my instinct is I'm just going to sit here and not talk to them because that's way easier than talking to them. So it's not like, this is this uh, challenge has gone away. I'm 45 now, and it's still there, that nervousness. Um, so anyways, I came home from this mission and met my ex-wife now at work, the same job. And the only reason she and I started talking, the same pattern held true, is because she became my team leader. So it made it easy to talk to her because... If she's my team leader, I have to talk to her. I don't have to like walk across the company room and say hi to her. It just has to happen. So, so I noticed a lot of my dates or previous relationships happened because the kind of the universe orchestrated it because I'm kind of a kind of a clueless dolt at times. It needs to be like <laughs> it needs to fall in my lap basically for it to happen. And, uh, but I thought she was really cute, really pretty. Uh, she's, she's nice. I thought, and I was like, well, I'd like to talk to her. And then it happened and I was like, whoa, that's kind of strange. I see all these people I like and I never talked to them, but then all of a sudden someone I liked, I was talking to and we started hanging out and talking and, um, went out a few times, but she liked another guy that we worked with. And uh, we had a long, we had a long talk at my house, my brother's house that I was living at at the time. This was in two thousand, early two thousand. Uh, and interestingly enough, I remember doing something that I didn't realize was the right move at the time. But when she said she liked someone else or didn't really see me like that or she didn't really like me like that, I did something interesting. I did the correct thing without knowing it was the correct thing. And that is, that is, I said, okay, well, I really like you, but okay. And I walked away from the situation without a fuss, without resistance. And three months go by-ish, and I get a phone call kind of out of the blue that summer of 2000. And it's, it's Heidi is, is her name. And she calls me, and we start talking, and... Uh, I think my walking away and letting it go was a was an attraction builder. I didn't know it at the time. Um, that's another thing I'll get to. There's all these things I'm going to get to. So I did I did something beginner's luck, if you want to call it that. That walking away is powerful and and not resisting. Um, it's an attractive trait in a man if he can walk away and live his own life without being needy or over pursuing a woman. I've learned. And uh, she called and I said, okay, let's. Go hang out and we started hanging out a lot and 
uh, I was excited to hang out with her. I thought she was very cute and nice and very attracted to her. And, and uh, she was kind of the first girl I got. I don't want to like get into the weeds or details too much, but she, she and I kind of started making out and getting close. And I was like, whoa, this is like a drug. This feels really good. And uh, we got married December of 2000. I was a virgin at the time, so was she. I've, I've also learned that that is the ideal relationship, if you can make it happen, is, is for two people who have never had sex with anyone to come together. But that's, that's mm, hardly possible in today's world, especially at age 45, for anyone who's lived some life and had some experience. But um, anyway, she and I were married for 14 years and had two girls, two daughters. You've seen my two daughters on this YouTube channel. My two precious daughters, they're, they're old now, they're teenagers, older, they're not old like me, but they're teenagers now. Ellie's driving, I let her drive my Tesla like a month or two ago. And then uh, Heidi and I divorced in October of 2014 and I moved out, largely. I've gone over that in previous videos. I made that conscious choice to, because I had moved away on my own path in life. And she needed someone that was a very kind of more basic, straight arrowed Mormon who, who was very committed and directed to that path. And I was very open to possibilities in all things. And I didn't feel like that was a good match for her. And I also felt like I needed to kind of live life under my own power. But I still wanted to be very much a father to my girls. And I have been. I see them about half the time. I pay child support. A lot of a lot of child support and um, and and I'm involved in my girls' lives. I go to their concerts and violin orchestras, plays, and things like that. And I very much care about my daughters and how they're doing. And so, um, so that so then I have had nine years. I had almost nine years this October. It'll be nine years since I moved out on my own. I remember moving out on my own in October of 2014, and I'm much older at the time. I was 36 now, so much older. And I remember going to a mall in Orem, Utah. I've shared this story before. And I just started talking to women because it was hard. It's still hard for me to do. Don't know why it's so hard, but it's difficult. And, um, let me pause for one second. I'll be right back. And we're back. Okay. Oh, where was I? Yes, I'm at the mall and started talking to women there because it's hard and difficult for me, especially if I find them really attractive. It's akin to like walking into an inferno or a spiked pit or a minefield. That's the feeling I get in my chest and stomach at least. I just... It feels like I'm gonna have my head ripped off, which is which is not true. Like, a woman is not gonna rip my head off, but it's more like the feeling of I could get rejected. And I think everyone has this fear. The fear of rejection is very powerful. Maybe it is a an equalizing force, a balancing force in life. I'm not sure what to call it, but I... Uh, I remember after talking to five or six people, getting into a zone, a flow state, the becoming a wizard. I've talked about this in previous videos. Each of us has the ability to become a wizard or to tap into our higher self at the highest level. It is a, it is a state of oneness and acting in perfection and oneness and peace and harmony and balance all rolled into one. And I, I entered this flow state and I went into this woman's jewelry store, which is like something I wouldn't normally do, of course, but all thought, the thinking mind went out the window and the feeling, acting, present mind and wizard came forward. And so I went right up to this counter to this very beautiful woman and uh, just spent the next 20 minutes having her show me around the store and tell me about her jewelry and what she's up to. And she did everything I asked. It was like I was a wizard with a wand. And I, and I was like, whoa. And then uh, kind of started coming to, I asked her for her phone number. She gave it to me and I left. 
And as I was walking out of the store in the mall, I just was like, what, what the hell just happened? And, and then the mortal Jeremy came back, the flawed and overthinking Jeremy came back and I tried texting her and setting up a date and it did not work out because only the wizard Jeremy would, was capable of attracting her. And the reason only the wizard Jeremy was capable of attracting her is because I later found out she was a Miss Teen USA, this 19 year old and uh, someone that young and that attractive, a beauty queen, her options of men are almost unlimited. The, the entire world is basically her pool of options. And the only way I, I surmise that I was able to even get her phone number and, and have her show interest is because I was a wizard. And that is exceptionally rare. When I am a wizard or that higher self wizard comes out, I become a top of the pyramid man, like very tip of the pyramid. If, you, if this is all men in the world, I'm like here. But when I'm a wizard, I'm at the top 0.001% of men. And I know that. Um, I also know that my worth is not based on me being that wizard or not. I've learned that. So it's not like I have to be that wizard Jeremy to be worthwhile or anything. Uh, but that's a lesson I've learned since then. But I just want to point out uh, one of the first lessons that I've learned over these nine years is that the more youthful and attractive a woman is, the greater her pool of options of men. And, and in fact, that kind of woman can get a message from a Russian billionaire or somebody who flies them out on a private yacht. Like that's, that's the reach a really attractive woman has, a youthful, attractive woman. And it's not so much that it's, it's just related to youth, but any aged woman um, who has even some level of attractiveness is gonna get a lot of attention from men versus the reverse. Uh, an attractive man has much less of a pool of options. An attractive man does not have the world of women as options. I know this because um, it, it's not played out that way for me. And I'm the, I'm the stereotypical man that I'll, a lot of videos I've seen on YouTube that women say they want, the six foot, uh, six figure, six pack, <laughs> um, good looking man. I, I fall into that stereotype, that category. And I know that. Um, but it's much different for a man to be that versus a woman. Uh, so, so I gained that experience going to the mall and talking to, to that beauty queen. And there's much more that goes into a woman, by the way, than just beauty. There's, there's a lot more. I think women are much more than that. Um, there's intelligence, there's empathy, kindness, ability to serve, softness, femininity, uh, how uh, evolved a woman is. There's all these things that I care about that I think make a woman really a special person. It's much more than just looks. Obviously looks matter and attraction matters, but it's much more than that. But that has to be there, of course. The attraction has to be there. Okay, so I had that experience in October of 2014, my first night alone, and I began this journey of going on hundreds and hundreds of dates and just testing myself because it's because it's so hard that that is the primary reason I've done it is it's difficult and there's never been a date I've gone on with someone that I really liked that was easy for me it's always been difficult and um, so I started to notice something and here's why there's a crisis for men when it comes to women so I, I went on a date with this woman and she was some, someone I considered just kind of an average, basic woman. It was like, yeah, there's, she's just kind of a even tiered or whatever you want to call it woman. And I looked at her Tinder account and she had over 3000 matches. And I was like, wow, I had a 200 at the time. This is when I was 37. And, and I was like, wow, you have like, um, 15, 15 times more matches than me. That's insane. 
And uh, I, I then checked it with other people's dating accounts, other women, because I became curious. I was like, hey, I'm kind of curious. How many matches do you have? Thousands. So I learned that, <laughs> that a woman uh, can just swipe right on a man in a dating app and will get a match most of the time. For, for most women, this is true. And the more attractive a woman, the more that rate goes up. Uh, whereas for a man, if he's super attractive, maybe he gets a match 10 to 20% of the time, which is, which is wild. So, so part of the crisis of men to women is most women want these guys, these top tier guys, the tallest, the best looking, the most rich, charismatic, successful, the top of the pyramid, this pyramid I showed you earlier, most women are going after these guys. And then you have this huge pool of men that are largely invisible to a lot of women. Uh, it's akin to the sperm trying to get into the egg to me. So many sperm try to get into an egg, but only one or a few get in if you have twins or triplets. And it seems to follow the same pattern in life for men when it comes to women. Many, many men go after a woman, but only one man, man is going to get that woman. And uh, the only way that one man has many women going after him is if he's in the, the top, he's a top tier guy, charismatic, successful, a comedian, a rapper, a rock star, a motivational speaker, a, a leader of some kind. Uh, a, a man who is a basic, boring guy has a much more difficult time. And so I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos on this. I'm fascinated by it. Uh, how the majority of men are single and alone. And that most women are dating the same guy. It's like, and I've seen this play out over my journey. So <laughs> I, I've, I've seen it play out. And... I don't know that I have an answer to this, but there seems to be a crisis with men who are alone, who would like to be with a woman, but can't get a woman they like. And the, and the challenge for a woman is she can get a lot of men, but she can't get the guy she truly wants. And so both men and women have the same challenge. Uh, men just have way less pool of options, whereas a woman has a giant pool of options. But men and women both are trying to get the best they can. We're trying to get the best possible match for us in our life that we can. That seems to be built into us. Uh, we don't want to settle for someone. And, and that's true for men and women. So why, why does this crisis exist? Why is it a crisis? Well, a lot of men are alone and depressed. A lot of men are alone and depressed. And having a hard time and evolution's kind of taken them out of the pool and I don't know if this can change not without some kind of like technological advancement or an, or an AI that it creates a woman for every man or something like that I don't see this changing because in general and I say in general because I know it's not the case there's 10% of women remember the 10% club of women that I mentioned there's a 10% group of women that appreciate things in a man like vulnerability and kindness and empathy. Uh, whereas most women want stoicism, strength, provision. Uh, and to some degree that 10% that club wants that. Uh, but I just think that there's much more room for the things that I value, such as vulnerability and that kind of thing. When I say vulnerability, I mean the ability to share your feelings and emotions, uh, but it should always be done from a place of strength, um, from just a desire to be honest and share, but without needing anything for it. You just share because it's true, and that's it. So, is there a solution to this crisis? Whew. I don't think the solution is for women to start dating down or to go to start dating men at the bottom of this pyramid because they'll always be unsatisfied and leave that man. I don't say always, but there's a good chance that'll happen. Because if you're with someone as a woman 
and you think you can get better, you will, that'll be in the back of your mind. And, and for men too, this, this is largely there as well, unless you consciously evolve past it. So at this stage, at 45 years old, 45 and a half now, I, I know that this kind of behavior is a default behavior. So I'm like, can I override this behavior? Can I, can I be a being that is not driven by the constant need to find the best I can get? Can I override that with conscious thought? And I think I can. I think I'm, I'm in the process of doing so. And so how do I do, how do you do that? Well, I think you treat everyone the same. There is no pyramid anymore. There is no tiers of men or women. There's just beings. Uh, soulful beings on this earth and you treat everyone the same you don't you don't give someone special treatment because you think they're at a higher tier than someone else so you learn to treat everyone the same you remove this ranking of people obviously um, if you're like going into business or doing something that requires skills you kind of do have to rank people like of course, and if you're if you want to find someone to marry or have have a as a life partner, you do need to have like some qualifications you're looking for or a resume like system, for sure. Um, but at this point in my life, I've I've largely removed the hunt for finding a woman, like trying to this this quest to find. Uh, that one special person. I've largely set that aside and disbanded that quest. And instead, the quest is uh, finding peace from within myself and treating everyone the same and not having myself be affected by any person. That quest I found is far more meaningful and impactful to me as I go to my yoga classes, the gym, or I go dancing on a Wednesday night, can I stand in my own power and peace regardless of who is around me? Because the truth is, I do get affected by certain people being around me. I have in the past. If I, if I find someone very attractive, I immediately think I can't talk to them. I have this, this limiting belief that says it's impossible for me to talk to them because they have the world as their pool of options so they're going to see me as a rudimentary guy. I'm going to be like low on their list of people that they'll ever care about. So I've created this belief in my mind and I think there's some truth to it. So I don't think, I think it would be unwise for me to ignore the data that I've gathered. But at the same time, I think it's important for us to, to treat everyone the same and and the biggest challenge for me is, can I be completely myself? Can I have my childlike enthusiasm? Can I be silly in my usual self, regardless of whom I'm around? I think that quest is far more powerful than trying to go out and date hundred, hundreds more people. Like, I'm not going out on dates anymore because the quest of improving my inner self is far more meaningful and impactful because I can control that. That is 100% within my control. I've talked about becoming a monk before on my videos. It always seems to be this thing that sticks in my mind. Uh, and I'm sort of going over what I think is the solution for men in this crisis when it comes to women. But the crisis is that women are going for the top, top 10, 20% of guys who match characteristics of height and strength and looks and money and provisions and capabilities and charisma and competence and all these things like that a lot of women value. Uh, so for you men, if you're, if you're a man listening to this, my, my advice to you is to focus inwardly on your own self-development and increasing your own inner peace uh, increasing your skills in life, whether that's baking or cooking or uh, personal training, writing, whatever it is, just become a very competent man in this life. 
find out what this life needs and become a servant to a need, something that you like and are passionate about as a man. And I think that's a pathway to peace, regardless if you ever find a woman or not, because the reality is the data and statistics are that it's tough as a man and you might be alone for the rest of your life. And so I've, I've kind of realized that this quest that I was originally on to try to find this one perfect woman is kind of like a mirage. It's kind of like fool's gold, it doesn't exist. Uh, and what's, what's more important and what I have control over is my own way of being and development. And for women, the challenge, the challenge is, is how do you choose from a pool of thousands of options? Or for some women, how do you, how do you sift through a pool of millions of options? It's a, both have their own unique challenges. But for a man, you just become the best you can be. Get your body into pristine shape. Learn how to speak. Learn a martial art of self-defense and learn how to punch and kick and grapple, uh, meditate, face your fears, be willing to speak, be willing to put yourself through difficult challenges. I volunteered for a challenge at my job where I get to lead a Zoom meeting with over 100 people to twice a month. That's a challenge, even on Zoom or a virtual conference to speak in front of that many people. It's difficult. And just do the best you can with who you are and try to find some sense of peace with yourself as you are. And I think that's an attractive quality. Someone who has made peace with who they are exactly as they are. And I have made, largely I've made peace with myself. I know who I am. I'm a very peaceful, calm, monk-like man. I value empathy and kindness. I, I can exert aggressiveness and force if I need to. I have learned over the last year martial arts, the ability to punch, kick, and grapple, and continue to practice that to shoot guns. So I have the ability of protection of myself and those I care about. Um, but it's, a, it's something to only be used as a last resort. But I think there's strength in that training. So learning a form of self-defense as a man, very good, and as a woman too. But this video is largely about men and the crisis we're facing. Uh, so I guess I have some answers to it. I can describe the crisis and give some answers to it. Uh, learn to be fun, have fun. I go dancing on Wednesday and my goal is to be a source of fun and kid-like energy because I am a kid at heart. I'm 45 and I'm a kid. I like to hop around like a frog and do silly things while I'm dancing and it's fun. I really enjoy that. And, and so just letting that kid energy out when I go out is, it feels good, it feels right. And that's me, like not everyone has that kid energy or can act like a five-year-old when they're dancing. <laughs> so I'm aware of that, but you have to find out who you are and what what resonates with you the best. Um, could this crisis be solved by women uh, opening up their pool of options to the average man? Sure, of course. But then they might feel scared or unprotected or kind of have one eye open towards the guy they really want still. Um, and the same for, for men. If you go for someone that is not who you really want, if you have not consciously thought about it, you'll have one eye open to someone else as well. Uh, the way around this for men and women is to treat everyone as souls, as, as beautiful souls on this earth. Of course, go for what you want, but understand, understand the reality, like truth and reality is important. I'm just kind of giving my own observation of what I think is the truth and what I've seen along my own journey. I've seen women very visibly get turned off by me when I cried or shared something vulnerable. I, I've seen it happen or I showed a lack of confidence, a lack of assertion. I have seen women literally kind of like there's an attraction meter, just go vroom, and uh, never hear from them again, just get completely ghosted because 
even a split second of doubt or insecurity or showing a lack of confidence, completely turn them off uh, because they probably um, can get a guy like that and have in the past. So why would they settle for anything less? I think that's what's going on there. It's just the, the default behavior of us as humans, like I said, unless we consciously become aware of it. Um, yeah, gosh, this video is like 35 minutes now. Um, I've had a lot of dating adventures and learnings through it. I failed a lot. I've been ghosted. I've been rejected thousands of times. I've had breakups. I've broken up with people, people have broken up with me, and everything in between. And where I've come to you after all of that is it's best for a man to find his own sense of self and inner peace. Do all the things I've mentioned. I'll go over it one more time. Get your body in incredible shape. Learn self-defense. Learn to speak. Volunteer for difficult things. Do public speaking if that's something that resonates with you, become competent at something, writing, cooking, baking, kicking, whatever it is that you resonate with, go for that. Um, and then just test yourself in the arena of life. And it's not easy. Like there's so many times throughout my day, if I see someone, I may be at the grocery store in my yoga class and I'll think, gosh, I really wanna go say hi to her. And I just say to myself, you know what, it's a lot easier to just kind of stand here with my thumb up my butt and not do it. And then I just sit there and don't do it because it's easier. But the times I had the courage to do it, even though, even if the person rejected me, I always felt a sense of growth, even if I failed at it. Um, that's why I did that video at Liberty Park last year. Now that it's getting warm, I'm going to do another one where I just go up and talk to people because that's very hard for me, even though it may not seem like it, it's difficult for me. All right, so I think I've described the crisis between men and women. Most men, many men, the majority of men are alone. Only a top percentage of men are getting the women in, in this world in general. Obviously it's not the case in every situation, but in general, this is what's happening and um, the way for men to overcome that I've talked about is to do various things to improve yourself and that'll make you more attractive. And for women, your challenge is picking someone. <laughs> uh, the challenge for a woman, if they pick a top tier guy, is that guy also has many options of women and may not be committal or may be emotionally unavailable. So you've got that challenge as well. All right, well, this is Jeremy J coming up on 38 minutes. Did you make it to this 38 minute mark? If you did, high five. Thanks for listening. This is just some thoughts about my own journey of life and how I've experienced it. And yeah, that, that initial wizard moment I had, the wizard, that wizard in me has come out before. And whenever that wizard comes out, I am basically a magnet to people and it is it's uh, very cool because I enter a state of detachment and oneness and uh, I agree that's kind of amazing to be around someone like that it's a it's a difficult not to want to be around someone who's a wizard so all right thanks so much for watching the crisis of men when it comes to women in this earth some thoughts some solutions Thank you so much for listening. Namaste. See you in the next video.